Good morning. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures uh, and turn with me in the authorized version of the scriptures to Psalm 19. We're going to have a expository video here today. Um, recently, the Lord has just been opening onto me Psalm 19, a jewel, a precious jewel. All scripture is a jewel and precious. But um, like I said, recently, of late, the Lord has just been showing me so many things through this one psalm, Psalm, uh, psalm 19. And I want to share with you what the Lord has shown me um, through Psalm 19. Like I said, we are going to have an expository video. We are going to go through this psalm verse by verse where, and... Um, comparing scripture with scripture, okay? So please get your authorized version of the scripture and follow me along. Please don't just sit there passively. Please go where we are going, turn where we are tur turning. Please follow me along in the scriptures that we will read today, okay? So, and as you can see, I've got two sets of scriptures. It's uh, a lot easier for me personally to have to have one here to read from and then do all the um, expositing through this other one. So you don't have to do it like that yourself. It's just easier for me. Okay. So let's begin. Psalm 19. And right away, right away. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. Now remember, there are three heavens. There is the sky that you and I see. There is the firmament, the dome. And then there's the third heaven where God God is himself, okay? Um, you know, where Paul went up to the third heaven, okay? So there's three heavens. There's the sky, the dome, and then there is um, the third heaven where God is, okay? But the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 on to verse 20. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. If you're not saved, you're in darkness. You're in darkness if you're not saved. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. All things were created by him and for him. Remember, God is spirit, soul, and body. You and I are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? The Holy Ghost is the spirit. God, the Father, is the soul. The Word made flesh. The Word made flesh is the body. And in Genesis chapter 1, the first three verses, you see how the Godhead operates, okay? How the Godhead can separate itself and speak one to another, okay? But see, God is spirit, soul, and body. Catholicism tells you God is three persons, Nonsense, okay? God is spirit, soul, and body. But it says here in verse 16, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, visible and invisible, hmm. whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Very interesting. And he is before all things. 
and by him all things consist. You lost devils. You wouldn't have today unless it was the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who allowed you to have today. You wouldn't have breath today if it wasn't for our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, allowing you to have breath. Who truly is in control? See, God has allowed the devil to run rampant for judgment. But ultimately, God is in control of all things. And by him, all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, the church of the living God, not the buildings, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence, that in all things he might have the preeminence, being chosen above everything else. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Mm. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And what we are to remember by looking at this in Colossians is verse 17. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Now go to Romans chapter 1, of course. Romans chapter 1. Here is the plight. Here is the, the problem, the crux of those that look to men who are educated in flesh. Okay? Um, yeah, here's the, here's the counter, actually, to what we just looked at. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. But see, you lost people who are following, following the dictates of Roman Catholicism, who are bending the knee to Satan. Romans chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 23. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shewed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. His eternal power and Godhead. Godhead. What is the Godhead? Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? That's what God is. He, God has a spirit. God has a soul. God has a body. Okay? You and I, who are made in the image of God, we have a spirit. We have a soul. We have a body. Okay? So by us, ourselves, the body of man, okay? Because Look at verse 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shoot it onto them. Okay? So when you look at the body of man, you're, you're an absolute fool if you think man evolved over millions and millions of years in a galaxy far, far away, okay? The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament sheweth his handiwork, okay? Verse 21, because that when they knew God, just here, just here, intellectually, not internally, not in the heart, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. Neither were thankful. But became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish heart was darkened. And the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Professing themselves to be wise. They became fools. See, you lost people and those who are ex educated in the ways of men, in the ways of man, in the ways of flesh. You think you're wise. 
but you're actually fools, and fools have said in their heart there is no God. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds like the third member of the satanic Catholic Trinity and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Let's read to verse 25. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie. Change the truth of God that God created you. God created everything into a lie that this evolved over millions and billions of years in a galaxy far, far away. Okay? Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature, what was created, more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. And then when you look at those guys, such as the behavioral, behavioral panel here on YouTube, those four wicked devils who are experts in flesh, you know, they worship the creature rather than the creator. How are some of you people doing at that? Worshiping the creation rather than the one who created the creation. Hmm? Very similarly, you give thanks for the blessing rather than thanking the blessor. You have your mind focused on the gift rather than the one who gives the gift. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. And he is the head of all things, and by him all things consist. Verses 2 and 3 in Psalm 19. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night sheweth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. There is no speech nor language where their, what is the their, speech or language, their voice is not heard. Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45, verses 18 and 19, just two verses. Isaiah 45, verses 18 and 19. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it, he created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret. In a dark place of the earth, I said not unto the seed of Jacob, Seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Not one of you lost people are without excuse. You, you have no excuse. You're without excuse. Excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. You are without excuse. You can't make an excuse. Why? God's telling you, I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. The things that are made give evidence of God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Word made flesh. In the beginning, God spake everything into existence. His Word, He spake everything into existence. So Jesus Christ is God the Father. He is our Creator. He is the Father. He even says He is the Father, okay? But I have not spoken in secret. In a dark place of the earth, I have said, I have, I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. He declares what is right. He speaks righteousness. And see, Satan in the garden said unto Eve, okay, um, yeah, go ahead, disobey. Eat the fruit of the tree that God said, don't eat of it. The day you eat thereof, your eyes will be opened. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. See, because of that, we're all born into sin because man thinks he knows what is good and evil when it is God himself, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. 
I declare things that are right. I declare things that are right. How does he declare them? In his word. See, you lost people. You're, you have no excuse. You are without excuse. You have no excuse. You, uh, you've heard the truth sooner or later somewhere in your life. And if you have rejected it, you are a child of wrath. And this leads into the, uh, the question, have you, has anyone asked, ever asked you, why did God create me? Why did God create this? Why did God do this? Why did God do that? Let's read these two verses again. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Anything that is right in this world that is righteous comes from our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. He declares righteousness. He declares things that are right. But what, you, why did God create you? Have you ever run into that question, brother, sister? Why did God create anything? Why did he do this? Why did he create you? Here's your answer. Very simple. Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things. Why did God create you? And for thy pleasure they are and were created. What does that mean? Why did God create you? Because he wanted to. Because he felt like it. Hmm. You as the clay, what are you going to say to the potter? Why did you make me this way? Hmm? Why did you make me? I didn't ask for this. No, he didn't. But he wanted you here. And what are you doing with that? Seeking Satan? The things of this world? Hmm. Now, go to Isaiah 49. Check this out. Check this out. Isaiah 49, verses 16 under verse 22. Isaiah 49, verses 16 under verse 22. Uh, Psalm 19, verses 2 and 3. Day unto day utter a speech, and night unto night sheweth knowledge. He has said nothing in secret. The truth is out there for you. Do you want to hear the truth? Or do you want to hear a lie? Which one is it? There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Isaiah 49, verses 16 on to verse 22. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Thy children shall make haste. Thy destroyers and they that made thee waste shall go forth of thee. Lift up thine eyes round about, and behold, all these gather themselves together and come to thee. As I live, saith the Lord, thou shalt surely clothe thee with them all, as with an ornament, and bind them on thee, as a bride doeth. For thy waste, and for thy waste, and thy desolate places, and the land of thy destruction, shall even now be too narrow by reason of the inhabitants. And they that swallowed thee up shall be far away. The children which thou shalt have, after thou hast lost the other, shall say again to, in thine ears, The place is too straight for me. Give place to me, that I may dwell. Mm. Very, very interesting, huh? Very interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Let's continue, okay? Then shall, uh, uh, verses, we were reading verses 16 on to verse 22. Then shalt thou say in thine heart, Who hath begotten me these? Seeing I have lost my children, and am desolate, a captive, and removing to and fro. And who hath brought up these? Behold, I was left alone. These, where had they been? Thus 
saith the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up mine hand to the Gentiles, and set up my standard to the people. And they shall bring thy sons in their arms, and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. Wonderful, isn't it? Absolutely wonderful. Day unto day utter a speech, and night unto night sheweth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Hmm. And see, in verses 21 on to verse 22, okay? Then shalt thou say in thine heart, Who hath begotten me these, seeing I have lost my children, and am desolate, a captive, and removing to and fro, removing to and fro? And who hath brought up these? Behold, I was left alone. These, where had they been? Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up mine hand to the Gentiles, and set up my standard to the people. And they shall bring their sons in their arms, and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. Calling people to separation from this. Okay? Three times in the scriptures. Here in Isaiah, in the dispensation of the law. In this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. And in the dispensation of the time of Jacob's trouble. In three places in scripture. God calls people to separation, separation from that, separation from this world, separation from things of this world, okay? Remember, he has said nothing in secret. And in saying nothing in secret, he has spake openly unto many of you, but you don't want to hear. And what is he doing? He is calling you onto separation, separation from the world. And the only way you can truly be separate from this world is to have the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, dwelling within you. Because day unto day utter a speech, and night unto night sheweth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Verse 4 in Psalm 19. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and, the word, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. Job chapter 14. Job chapter 14. Job chapter 14, verses 1 on to verse 7. Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow, and continueth not. And dost thou open thine eyes upon such an one, and bringest me into judgment with thee? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Turn from him that he may rest till he shall accomplish as an hireling his day. For there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. And of course, you can tie that into a reference to the fig tree. Verse 4 in Psalm 19. Their line has gone out through all the earth. Line, a measuring line, between side on side, either what is on one side and on the other side. Okay? Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun. He has set boundaries for certain things, hasn't he? Hasn't he? Hasn't he? Okay, go to Psalm 104. Psalm 104. Psalm 104, verses 1 on to verse 10. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Who coverest thyself with light as with a garment. Who stretcheth out the heavens like a curtain. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters. Who maketh the clouds his chariot. Who walketh upon the wings of the wind. Who maketh his angels spirits. His ministers a flaming fire. Who laid the foundations of the earth, 
that it should not be removed forever. Thou coveredest it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At thy rebuke they fled. At the voice of thy thunder they hasted away. They go up by the mountains. They go down by the valleys unto the place which thou hast founded for them. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over. They that they turn not again to cover the earth. He sendeth the springs into the valleys, which run among the hills. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun. God has made everything the way he wants it to be made. He sets bounds for things, okay? Boundaries. Imagine that, okay? Okay? Verses 2 and 3, he said nothing in secret. Today, the way of salvation is made quite plain unto you. But see, you have to come on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord call upon his name. Okay. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. Verse 4, their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun. Again, he's made all things. He set the sun where it is to be. He set the planets, planets appears in scripture, where he wants them to be. He has created everything, okay? And he said nothing to you in secret. Nothing to you in secret. He is God, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, okay? He is in control of everything. He controls the tides. He controls everything, okay? Isaiah chapter 66, verses 1 and 2. Here's a healthy reminder for us. Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. Remember, he has said nothing in secret. And trembleth at my word. You don't tremble at an NIV, <laughs> at an ESV. Come on, give me a break. Who do you think God is? See, so often people want to make God into one of their own making. You, thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as thyself? God is nothing like us. God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, yes. But God as man did something that you and I could never do. He never sinned. He was tempted by the flesh. And all temptation was through the flesh. But he never sinned. That's something you and I never could do. He, as man, experienced all that you and I will ever experience. But he, unlike us, never sinned. Do you know who God truly is? Hmm? Do you truly know who God is? Verse 5. This is where it gets good. Verse 5 in Psalm 19 which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. Song of Solomon's. Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Solomon's Song. The Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 8 under verse 15. The voice of my beloved. Now, for our instruction in righteousness, when you read the book of Solomon, to instruct us in righteousness, the Shunammite, the Gentile bride of Solomon, King Solomon, in type, King Solomon in the Song of Solomon is our Lord Jesus Christ. That bride, that Gentile bride, is the church of the living God, comprised of both Jew and Gentile. So when reading 
Song of Solomon for us today in this dispensation for our instruction in righteousness. We see it through that, through that lens as the beloved is our Lord Jesus Christ and this bride whom he is speaking unto is his church, the church of the living God. So, Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 15. Verse 5 in Psalm 19, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. The voice of my beloved, behold, he cometh, leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. My beloved is like a roe or a young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall. He looketh forth at the windows, shewing himself through the lattice. My beloved spake and said unto me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. This is talking about, this is a reference, I believe, obviously, unto the catching way of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. For lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of the singing of birds has come, the voice of the turtle, and yes, uh, turtles make a, has a, have a voice, they make a croaking sound, is heard in our land. The fig tree putteth forth her green figs. Remember what we already looked at, that there's hope of a tree if it's cut down that it will sprout, uh, sprout again. And the fig tree that Jesus cursed, only that specific fig tree died and withered and brought, no for, uh, brought forth no fruit because that was specifically, he was talking about that was for that specific generation. But see, the fig tree, which you can liken on to Israel, the fig tree putteth forth her green figs, <coughs> and the vines with the tender grape give a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Come away. This is why, obviously, this is why I believe that the catching away takes uh, place in the springtime. It could happen at any moment, yes, but I believe in correlation to this, that it when the catching away happens, it's going to be sometime in the spring. That's my personal belief. Oh, my dove, that art in the secret, oh, my dove, that art in the clefts of the rock, in the secret places of the stairs, let me see thy countenance, let me hear thy voice, for, thy, for sweet is thy voice, and thy countenance is comely. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. Now go to Song of Solomon's uh, 4, verses 7 on to verse 14. How our Lord Jesus Christ sees us, his body, his church, the church of the living God. See, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from all sin. And God's imputed righteousness he made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Okay? Imputed righteousness. God sees us through the righteousness which is of Jesus Christ. Sol uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verses 7, on to verse 14. Thou art all fair, my love. There is no spot in thee. That doesn't mean that you're sinlessly perfect, but because of the blood of Jesus Christ, because you are washed in the blood of the Lamb, because you are sealed onto the re, uh, day of redemption, you are saved, you are eternally secure. There is no spot in thee. Come with me from Lebanon, my spouse. With me from Lebanon, look from the top of Amana, from the top of Shinar and Hermon, from the lion's dens, from the mountains of the leopards, Thou hast ravished my heart, my sister, my spouse. Thou hast ravished my heart with one of thine eyes, with one chain of thy neck. How fair is thy love, my sister, my spouse. How much better is thy love than wine. 
and the smell of thine ointments than all spices. Thy lips, O my spout, spouse, drop as the honeycomb. Honey and milk are under thy tongue, and the smell of thy garments is like the smell of Lebanon. A garden enclosed. A garden enclosed is my sister, my spouse. A spring shut up, a fountain sealed. Enclosed and sealed. Out of his belly shall go forth living water. Okay? Enclosed. Enclosed, surrounded. Sealed. A fountain sealed. Sealed until the day of redemption. Thy plants are an orchard of pomegranates with pleasant fruits. Campfire with spikenard. Spikenard and saffron. Calmus and cinnamon with all trees of frankincense. Myrrh and aloes with all the chief spices. Let's read verse 15. A fountain of gardens, a well of living waters, and streams from Lebanon. Talking about uh, those who are saved of the church of the living God, who come unto God on his terms, okay? His love is for you when you come to him on his terms. You come to him broken of your self-righteousness, godly sorrow, having contrition, because it's your fault that he died, and fear of the Lord, because he's going to send you to hell, okay, unless you call upon his name and ask him to forgive you, okay? And once that happens, he may and he save you, you are enclosed, you are sealed, as in verse 12, okay? Out of your belly shall flow uh, rivers of living waters. See, this is how he views his bride. And in chapter 2, the catching away of his bride before the time he checked his total. See? Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> now, verse 6. Verse 6. His going forth is from the end of heaven and his circuit onto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Now this one we're going to do quite a bit on, okay? His going forth is from the end of heaven and his circuit onto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Micah chapter 5. Micah, Micah chapter 5, beg your pardon, brethren. Micah chapter 5, verses 100, verse 4. Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. He hath laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrata, Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from, uh, have been from old, from everlasting. From everlasting, the everlasting Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, as talked about in Isaiah chapter 9. His going forth whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth hath brought forth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. And he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord and the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall abide, for now shall he be great unto the ends of the earth. Look at verse 3. Oh, beg your pardon. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth hath brought forth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. And of that, of course, go to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 under verse 5. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, 
and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. This woman is Israel, the crown of twelve stars, the twelve tribes of Israel. And she being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. Uh, Jesus Christ is a Jew. God our Father, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is a Jew. He's a Hebrew, okay? He came unto his own, and his own received him not, okay? So, and she being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Is it not evident that our Lord sprang from Judah, one of the 12 tribes from Israel? Okay? Salvation is of the Jews. Okay? Israel. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon. Great red dragon. Who is that great red dragon? That's Satan. Okay? Beg your pardon. And there appeared another, beg your pardon. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven horns and having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, Israel, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And remember Herod, when our Lord Jesus Christ was born. Okay? He sent those guys after the wise men mocked him to go and kill all the children under two years of age. Okay? And she brought forth a man-child, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Israel is that woman. And she delivered who? Israel came, from Israel came who? Our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. Verse 6 in Psalm 19. His goings forth is from the end of heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Okay. Now go to Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 9. Zechariah chapter 9. Zechariah chapter 9. Big part, brethren, I'll get there. Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 and 10. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and the horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace unto the heathen. And his dominion shall be from sea even to sea, and from the river even to the ends of the earth. His going forth is from the end of heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. And his dominion shall be from sea, even to sea, and from the river, even unto the ends of the earth. Again, how big is God? How big is our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father? The enormity of who God is, who created the heaven and earth, the seas and all things that are therein. He set bounds for things like the, the sun to stay in the sky, the stars, the planets, okay? Times and seasons. And he has said nothing in secret, okay? The way of salvation is made plain unto you. But there's a condition. You have to come to him on his conditions, not your own. Otherwise, you're a thief and a robber. And the things that are seen give testimony unto the creation of God. Even you yourself give testimony that you were created by God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and not evolved over millions and billions of years in a galaxy far, far away. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Okay? Now, go to Zechariah chapter 13. Zechariah chapter 13. Verses 7 on to verse 19. 
Huh? <laughs> oh, verses 7 on to verse 9. Beg your pardon. In Zechariah chapter 13. <laughs> I wrote 19. Verses 7 on to verse 9 in Zechariah chapter 13. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. And that's what happened in the Garden of Gethsemane. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third part shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire. Through the fire, the third part, that remnant that's going to survive, that's going to endure to the end during the time of Jacob's trouble, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them, and I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, the Lord is my God. Talking about the future fulfillment when the Jews, Israel, will finally get it through their heads and understand and come to accept and believe on their Lord Jesus Christ, God, our Father, as their Savior, as their promised Messiah, as their King, which he truly is. And that's going to happen midway, I believe, through the time of Jacob's trouble, see? Okay? Now, go to Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3, verses 9 on to verse 12. Okay? Look at this. Matthew chapter 3, verses 9 on to verse 12. Verse 6 in Psalm 19, once again. His going forth is from the end of heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Matthew chapter 3, verses 9 on to verse 12. And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, that God is able to uh, able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Just because you were born of the uh, lineage of the Hebrew, of the Jew, today, doesn't guarantee you salvation. There is one way to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. The way of salvation is brokenness, contrition, and in fear of the Lord calling upon his name. Okay? There is one way of salvation. There is a one way to the Jew and a one way to the Gentile. No, that's heresy. No, there is only one way. Jesus Christ is that way. Okay? And thinking in yourself that you are of the lineage of the Hebrew, okay, that doesn't guarantee you salvation. Not at all. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly, plur thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Now see, these wicked charismatic Pentecatholics, they like to take verse 12 and account the fire, about the fire of the Holy Ghost, about the tongues with fire. No, that's not what it's talking about. Okay? Okay. Uh, his going forth is from the end of heaven, of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Okay? Look at verse 12 here. Uh, look at verse 11, okay? I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire and with fire. Now, the charismatic Pentecatholic people say, that's, that's talking about the Holy Ghost, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Uh, wait a second there. Wait a second. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly, thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat 
Look at that. Don't look at me. And gather his wheat into the garner. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. But he will burn the chaff with unquenchable fire and with fire. See, verse 11 and 12, dear Pentecatholic, is talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, as judge between uh, discerning, uh, judging between the sheep and the goats. That's what this is talking about. Okay? Prove that to you. Absolutely. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Verses 19 on to verse 24. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what, does, what he seeth the Father do. For what, for what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and sheweth him all things that himself doeth. And remember, the Father is the soul of the Godhead. Okay? And he will shew him greater works than these that ye may marvel. For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who is our Father. Okay? Okay? As we have seen, it is Jesus Christ, the Son of David, who has the keys of heaven and hell, death and life. Okay? He is judge. Jesus Christ is the judge. Okay? Verse 23. That all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father which has sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Psalm 2. Psalm 2. Psalm 2. Oops. Psalm 2. Look at verse 23. That all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which has sent him. See, Jesus Christ is God the Father. The soul of the Godhead is the Father. Jesus called himself the Father. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Have I not been so, have I been so long time with you, Philip, and thou hast not known me? But see, these Trinitarians who get so rabid, frightfully rabid, Jesus is not the Father. <laughs> There's a problem there. See, that stems from Catholicism. But go to Psalm 2. Psalm 2, verse 6, on to verse 12. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. My king, Jesus Christ, God our Father. God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? The Word made flesh. There, you wicked Catholic, okay? I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Yes, God was a man, our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is of the seed of David, meaning he is the son of David, 
king of the Jews, and he will rule when he come back down at his second coming with us, the church of the living God, his army, okay? When he come back down, he's going to rule and reign as king from Jerusalem, sitting upon the throne, okay? Okay, you, you, you with me on that? Okay, so in verse 23 in John chapter 5, that all men should honor the Son even as they honor the Father. And Trinitarians don't honor our Lord Jesus Christ as the Father, which he truly is. And look at them. Look at the Trinitarians. They get frightfully rabid. Jesus is not the Father. <laughs> yeah. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which has sent him. Okay? See, Jesus Christ is our judge. Okay? Verse 6 in Psalm 19. His going forth is from the end of heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Okay? He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Okay? Now, go to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 on to verse 34. When the Son of Man shall come, now this is after the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? This is after the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, Matthew chapter four, uh, 24 is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all his only holy angels with him. Hi, that's us, the church of living God. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory as the son of David, king of uh, the Jews in Jerusalem. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as the shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Those who have the Holy Ghost are sealed unto the day of redemption, the sheep. Those who are destined to the fire, they're the goats. Now, there are trials by fire. Yes, absolutely. But see, what is being talked about in Matthew chapter 3 is referring on to our Lord Jesus Christ as judge. Nothing with this nonsense that these wicked, charismatic, Pentecatholic people like to twist because, number one, they don't rightly divide the word of truth, obviously. But it's, it's no, it's talking about him as judge, okay? Look at verse 4 in Psalm 19. Their line has gone out to all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. And that's an S-U-N, by the way. Look at verse 6. His going forth is from the end of heaven, okay? And his circuit unto the ends of it, ruling all the world, okay? And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Verse 32 in uh, Matthew chapter 25. And before him shall be gathered all nations... And he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world saying that to the sheep, those who are on his right hand, okay? In correlation to those who survived the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? Okay? Now, look at verse 41, okay? The sheep on his right hand are going to inherit what? The kingdom of, he uh, uh, kingdom of heaven. But what about the goats? Verse 41. To the goats. Because what does it say here? What does he say here? <clears throat> Verse 33, And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, we are sheep, but the goats on the left, those who are not of the church of the living God, those who will not come to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ during that time period of the time of Jacob's trouble, which is faith and works, you take the mark of the beast, you're going to hell, you lose your salvation. End of story, okay? Okay? Verse, uh, okay, so the sheep are on the right hand, the goats are on the left. Again, verse 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, 
Inherit the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And unto them goats. Verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. His left hand, sheep on the right, goats on the left. See, Matthew chapter 3, verses 19, 9 on to verse 12, is talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, as judge. Okay? Okay? He's going to make distinction between those that are his and those that are not. Okay? It is God who makes the dividing line. It is God who will reveal who truly is his and who truly is not. Okay? Okay, you, you with me so far? Now, go to Revelation chapter 2. Jesus Christ is our judge. He's going to judge everything, okay? He is the judge. We, we've already looked at that. But Revelation chapter 2, one verse, verse 23, okay? Oh, and by the way, if you have red words in your scriptures, see, I have a Cambridge uh, in the book of Revelation. There's no red words in the book of Revelation for our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, in the Cambridge here. But, you know, all you non-dispensational red word Christians who like the lovey-dovey, sappy Jesus that the Christians, you know, that you guys preach on to people who is actually that son of perdition. What do you do with this, hot shot? Here's Jesus Christ speaking, God our Father, as judge. Verse 23 in Revelation 2. And I will kill her children with death. Oh, oh boy. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Oh, that's just talking about thy attire. No, no. Jesus Christ is God. He is our Father. He is the judge. He is the one who's going to judge you. By what? The standard that he has. He's going to judge you according to the scriptures. The books are, will be open. Okay? The three books. Okay? He's going to judge you according to the scriptures. Now, oh, we're not done with that one. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22, verses uh, 12 and 13. Again, our Lord Jesus Christ talking. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. My reward is with me. Get that. Your reward is the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. How precious and how sweet that is. To know that we are going to be, those of us who are saved, born again, converted to the church of the living God, knowing that we are going to be forever with the Lord. What a comfort. What a peace. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. To give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega. What does that mean? The beginning and the end. The first and the last. Jesus Christ is God, our Father. He is our judge. Now go to 1 Corinthians. Okay? 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter... Three. First Corinthians chapter three. First Corinthians chapter three, verses thirteen on to verse fifteen. You might be saying, "Well, I'll be, be a little confused about the fire and about here in First Corinthians um, uh, thirteen, First uh, Corinthians chapter three. The fire here is to try the works of those who are of the church of the living God, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 
Let's read verses 12 on to verse 15. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. What is this foundation? Verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, things that abide fire, okay? Wood, hay, stubble. Wood. Hey, stubble, things that get burnt up. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Again, the judgment seat of Christ, which are for those who get caught up, the saved, Okay, we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And what's going to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ is our works for rewards, not for our salvation. Because it says in the book of Ephesians that we are sealed until the day of redemption. Beg your pardon. We are once saved, always saved. Okay, what's being tried is our works. Whether our works be gold, silver, precious stones, things that abide the fire, or... Wood, hay, stubble, things that go up like a puff, not our salvation. See, that's the difference. Let's continue. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Built upon that foundation, which is Christ, and upon that foundation, which is Christ, building gold, silver, precious stones, things that shall abide the fire. Okay? If any man's work shall be burned, Burn, such as wood, hay, stubble, meaningless, useless, okay? He shall suffer loss, loss of rewards, but he himself shall be saved, yet, uh, yet so as by fire, as judge. See, the fire, the fire trying our works, see, he will, per, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. See, it's talking about him being judge. Those who have the Holy Ghost, we are saved, born again, converted. We're going to heaven no matter what, okay? Our works are going to be tried by fire. But see, we ourselves are saved. What about the other ones who are not saved, okay? What about those others, okay? Go to 2 Corinthians, but before we go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Forgot to add this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For those of us who are saved, okay, those of you who are lost, you are not going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Verse 10 in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. All. Who is this written to? The church of the living God. In context, this is for those who are saved. Born again, converted, sealed until the day of redemption, a new creature in Christ Jesus, okay? That every one may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad, okay? So we at the judgment seat of Christ, that fire is going to try our works for our rewards, but we ourselves are going to be saved. We are, we are eternally secure, okay? We, the saved, will stand at the judgment seat of Christ. And see, again, he'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. It's talking about him being judge, okay? He is our judge. He is the judge, okay? Whose fan is in his hand, okay? All right? In uh, Matthew chapter uh, 3, verse 12, defines verse 11, what it's talking about. It's not as the care Catholic Pentecatholics like to tell you, dear friend. No, it's it's referring on to Jesus as judge. Okay? Okay? Now, go to Revelation 20. Go to Revelation 20. Revelation 20, verses 11 on to verse 15. Here is for you lost people. And I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it, from whose face 
The earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books, plural, were open, which is the, which is the, uh, and another book, excuse me, was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. See, they were judged according to their works. While we at the judgment seat of Christ, our works are tried for our rewards, our salvation. It said, we already looked at it. We were saved. He himself shall be saved, yet as through fire. And that's not talking about purgatory. That fire is talking about trying our works, okay? But see here, you're going to be judged according to your works. No guarantee of salvation, see. And the sea gave up the dead which, are, which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Into the lake of fire. And what is that lake of fire, dear friend? See, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Yes, see, fire denotes what? Trial. Denotes what? Purging refining. So he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Those who come to him on his terms and are saved, born again, converted, they are sealed with the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit. Okay. So saved. And then with fire to try your works. And also for those who are going to go to hell. It's talking about judgment him being a judge. Okay. Go to Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9 verses 42 on to verse 48. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire, where their worm dieth not, and their fire is not quenched. When their fire is not quenched. See, he's not talking about self-mutilation, okay? If you're touching things that your hands shouldn't be touching, Stop it. Cut it off. Okay? It's better to look like a fool in the eyes of the world than to go to hell. Okay? If your feet are taking you to places where you shouldn't go, cut it off. It's better for you to be lame in the sight of the world than to go to hell. Okay? If your eye offends you, what are you looking at? Pluck it out. For it's better to go with only one eye than to go to hell. He's not talking about self-mutilation. He's talking about getting, separating things from you that's going to cause you to sin and stuff like that for our instruction and in righteousness, of course. Okay. So that's what that's talking about. See, now go back to Mar uh, Matthew chapter 3. Go back there. Matthew chapter 3, verse 6 in Psalm 19. His going forth is from the end of heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Matthew chapter 3, verses 9 on to verse 12 again. And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. 
Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Continue reading. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly, thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into his garner, those who are saved, but he will burn up the chaff, that which is useless, with unquenchable fire. See, verse 12 explains to you verse 11. It's talking about our Lord as judge. It's not talking about this, the cloven tongue over them of fire, the Holy Ghost fire that these nitwit care Catholic Pentecatholics with their demonic, devilish, blah, 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 blah. No, it's, none of, it's nothing like that. This is talking about Jesus Christ as judge. He is our judge. That's what it's talking about. Okay? John is saying, hey, God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is judge of all, he's coming after me. Okay? It's talking about him as judge, people. Don't forget that. Don't let that little, that little bent from the care Catholics mislead you okay it's talking about him as a judge that's what that means okay now let's continue in verse 7 in psalm 19 and here it is now see verse 6 uh verse 7 this is where the psalm turns see verses 1 under verse 6 is telling you the 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 grandness of God, that he is in control of all things. He made the heavens and the earth. He has set boundaries for things, okay? He came from heaven, the ends of heaven. He rules all the earth, okay? He is your judge. Verses 1 under verse 6 tell you about how big God is, that he is everything, that he is the one who is going to judge you. It is he who you have to deal with, okay? Verse 7 under verse 14 now. Here's where this turns. Verse 7 in Psalm 19. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Psalm 119, Aleph. Psalm 119, Aleph. Psalm 119, Aleph. What, what is that, Brad? Okay. See this? See Psalm 119? See Aleph? That's what I'm referring to. See that? Most sets of scriptures have that heading, the uh, Hebrew uh, alphabet thing there, okay? Most do. If yours does not, Aleph is verses 1 under verse 8, okay? But I'm going to be addressing uh, by the Hebrew letter that is above these, okay? That's how we do that, so you can learn it like this, okay? Psalm 119, Aleph, which is, which is verses 1 under verse 8. Verse 7 in Psalm 19. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Psalm 119, Aleph. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. The law of the Lord is perfect. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. You, and what, you think that's changed for today? Oh, don't, don't you worry. We're, don't you worry. Well, don't worry about that. No, see, God doesn't save you to have you walk aimlessly according to your feelings. Okay? That's, that's nonsense. 
No, God has given you the scriptures. You are to live according to the scriptures, okay? The God who made everything, who is in control of everything, who set a bound for everything, but the sun, the stars, the planets, everything, okay? He's not going to let you walk aimlessly as his child. No, he's giving you the word, the authorized version of the scriptures for you to live by, okay? Verse 5. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. Brother, sister, what happens when you go contrary to the word of God in your life? Praise the Lord. We feel ashamed, don't we? What happens when you erroneously don't rightly divide the word of truth, you feel ashamed, don't you? You ought to. What happens when we go, go outside of what God has commanded us to do? I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Verse 8 in Psalm, 19, in Psalm 19. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Psalm 119, Beth and A.N. Psalm 119, Beth and A.N. Hold on one second there, brethren. I got to find that. Psalm 119, Beth. And A in. Psalm 119, Beth is verses 9 on to verse 16. And A in is, oh, let me find it, let me find it, is, uh, we'll get there in a minute, but Beth, Psalm 119, verses 9 on to verse 16. Verse 8 in Psalm 19, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? With my whole heart have I sought thee. Let me not wander from thy commandments. See, the whole heart. See, people can go at it half-heartedly. Read only mechanically. And miss out on so many things. No, you are to devote yourself to the Lord through his word by dedicating to live your life according as he commands you through the word. And that results what? That results in what? Peace. That results in peace. More on that in a little bit, but let's continue. Verse 11. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Do you delight yourself in the word of God? That his way is right, pure, clean? Hmm? Now go to Psalm 119 AM, which is verses 121 on to verse 128. AM. Psalm 119 AM. Verse 8 again in Psalm 19. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the the commandment of the Lord is pure. Lightening the eyes. Psalm 119, Aen. I have done judgment and justice. Leave me not to mine oppressors. Be surety for thy servant for good. Let not the proud oppress me. Mine eyes fail for thy salvation and for the word of thy righteousness. Deal. Look at verse 21, 23. Mine eyes fail for thy salvation. We wanted to leave yesterday, didn't we? Yes, we did. 
and for the word of thy righteousness. We see a world out there that, has, that wants nothing to do with the word of God, the authorized version of the scriptures, especially the Christians who are infiltrated by the Jesuit order, these yea hath God said cemeterians, okay? A better translation, the Greek says this, better, then shut up. Christians want nothing to do with the word of God, the authorized version of the scriptures. Christians want Bibles. It's a big difference. Verse 124, and deal with thy servant according unto thy mercy, and teach me thy statutes. I am thy servant. Give me understanding. And what is understanding? We're going to look at that in the next verse. But what is understanding? To depart from evil. Deal well with the, deal with thy servant according unto thy mercy, and teach me thy statutes. I am thy servant. Give me understanding, that I may know thy testimonies. It is time for thee, Lord, to work. For they have made void thy law. Therefore I love thy commandments above gold. Yea, above fine gold. Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right. And I hate every false way. There are religions out there that are contrary to the scriptures. Roman Catholicism, Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnessism, Islam. Okay? Uh, what else? What else? Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism. Okay? These are all contrary to God's word. They are all contrary to the scripture, especially Roman Catholicism, which is the mother of all harlots and abominations of the earth. Okay? We are to hate that which is false. Okay? These religious systems, Christianity, such as Catholicism. Remember, Catholics are Christians. Lutherans are Catholics who are Christians. Methodists are Christians. Baptists are Christians. Okay? It doesn't matter what some of these might have once been. What has Roman Catholicism turned them into today? They're false. Therefore, we as the Church of the Living God are to hate every false way. Do you hate every false way? Or do you want to make peace with it? You try to, what is it, what is the saying? Um, chew up the meat and spit out the bones with something that is clearly of the devil? Do you hate every false way? I do. I hate Catholicism. I do not hate the Catholic, the person, spirit, soul, and body. But I sure do hate Catholicism. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, Verse 9, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Job, of course we have, of course, Job 28, verse 28. Job 28. Verse 28. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. Proverbs 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. 
Proverbs 1 verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools who say in their heart there is no God despise wisdom and instruction. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom equated with the fear of the Lord. And to depart from evil is understanding. So when you fear the Lord, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So with wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord, if you have the fear of the Lord, which is wisdom, that will lead you into knowledge. But fools despise wisdom, the fear of the Lord, and instruction. And from knowledge comes, with knowledge comes what? Instruction. Obviously, right? The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Proverbs 9, verse 10. Proverbs 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the holy is understanding, departing from evil. See, from verses 1 into verse 6, on to verse 6 in Psalm 19, shows you the supremacy of God, the uh, all of God. He's got the whole world in his hands, even you, whether you want to accept that or not. And he has given us his word. And if you come to him on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon his name and he save you, okay, you will be sealed with the Holy Ghost. And he gives you his word. And you will learn of him. You will learn of him through his word. See, he has exalted his word above his name. How do you learn about the Lord? How do you learn of the Lord? Through the scriptures. Okay? And by fearing the Lord, which is wisdom, and in that wisdom comes knowledge. And with that knowledge comes instruction. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy, holy, what is holy? To be separate, other, is understanding. To be separate and other than that is to be separate from all of it, which is understanding, departing from evil. Because that is evil. Okay? The world is evil. Have you not noticed? Okay? Now, go to Psalm 111. Oh, this is good. This is good. Psalm 111. Psalm 111. I love This is good. <laughs> this is good. Psalm 111, verses 7, under verse 10. Looking at verse 9 again here in Psalm 19. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Psalm 111, verses 7 on to verse 10. The works of his hands are verity and judgment. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. He sent redemption unto his people. Because remember, salvation is of the Jew. It was to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Greek. Greek is a Gentile. Okay? He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. Jesus Christ, the only name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. That's why when you see reverend so-and-so, that's blasphemy. Uh, the most reverend, uh, shut up. Blow it out your nose. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. Now, as we have already looked at, okay, God as our judge, if you are of the church of the living God, if you are going to be foolish, living as if there is no God, and take his word and cast it behind your back and not want to live by it, um, 
You may be handed over to the destruction of the flesh. The spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Why would anyone who is of the church of the living God not want to be in the scriptures and to learn of our Lord Jesus Christ and his statutes for living today in this dispensation? Okay? You come to him on his terms. You are sealed. Okay? This has nothing to do with salvation. Sanctification. Remember, you're saved of the church of the living God. You are our Lord's ambassador. And how you serve him reflects him. Okay? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding, departing from evil, have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. Well, there are no commandments for us today in this dispensation, Brad. That's what you want to believe, don't you? You want to believe, you want to just live by your feelings. God help you. That's what you want. You don't want anyone to tell you what to do. So you listen to these easy believism devils who coaxed you along, who want you to be comfortable in sin. Don't is it don't you? Don't you? Christian, don't you? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. God wants you to live by his standard. Number one, because you serve him and how you serve him reflects him. And number two, it's for your benefit. It's for your benefit. Living by your feet, living by the flesh, you'll die. But if you live by the spirit, you'll live. Okay? And that has nothing to do with salvation if you are saved, born again, converted, sealed unto the day of redemption of the church of the living God, a new creature in Christ Jesus. No. No, it's not talking about salvation. Sanctification. How you represent the Lord who saved you. Okay? Now go back to Psalm 119, and we want Zane. Psalm 119, Zane. Psalm 119, Zane. Hold on, I'm going to find it. <laughs> Psalm 119, Zane, which is uh, verses 49 on to verse 56. Verse 9 again in Psalm 19. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. This is my comfort and affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. Uh, one second, I'm looking over my notes here really quick. Okay. Yeah, we, we will address that. We will address that. This is my comfort and affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. The proud have had me greatly in derision, yet have I not declined from thy law. I remembered thy judgments of old, O Lord, and have comforted myself. Horror hath taken hold upon me because of the wicked that forsake thy law. Thy statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. I have remembered thy name, O Lord, in the night, and have kept thy law. This I had... Why? This I had, why? Because I kept thy precepts. Pick your part, brethren. Pick your part about that, okay? Look at verse 50 in Psalm 119 and. This is my comfort and affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. Verse 52. I remembered thy judgments of old, O Lord. And have comforted myself. Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. Romans 15. Okay. Romans 15. Verses 1. On to verse 6. This is doctrine for us today, by the way. In Romans. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. 
Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. Verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, the Old Testament, were written for our learning. That we through that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. You know, search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that ye may with one mind and with and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, receive ye one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. We are not to live outside the scriptures. We are not to live outside the scriptures whatsoever. God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. But see, through patience and comforts of the scriptures, that we might have hope. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Verse 10 in Psalm 119. In Psalm 19. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 on verse 3. Verse 10 again. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 on verse 3. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord sware unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart that you might know what was in your heart. God already knows, okay? Whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone, by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Job 23. Job 23. Job 23. Verses 10 on to verse 12. Job 23, verses 10 on to verse 12. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Refined. Judged. To fire. Okay? Remember, Matthew 3, verses 9 on to 12, is talking about him being judge. Okay? Ah, where were we? Okay, from verse 10. My foot hath held his steps. His way have I kept and not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. I have esteemed the words of his mouth, the words of his mouth, the scriptures, more than my necessary food. Choose the scriptures over eating, fasting, you know? Hmm. Hmm. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. 
Proverbs chapter 3, verses 13 on to verse 17. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. Happy is the one who has the fear of the Lord. And the man that getteth, departing from evil, understanding. And when you go against that, shame. So it's a good thing to fear the Lord. It's a good thing to depart from evil. Not to be meddled in it. Like these Christians want you to be part of the world. To be of the world. So you can win the world, right? For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver. And the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies. And all things that thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. Are peace. Hmm. All her ways, look at that verse. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and, her, and all her paths are peace. The fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom, which will lead on to knowledge and instruction, which will lead on to departing from evil, understanding. Okay? Go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. Second Timothy, chapter 2. Not First Timothy, beg your pardon. Second Timothy, chapter 2. Verse 15. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And also, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 on to the close of the chapter, verse 17. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Spirit of truth, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the spirit of truth, okay? The Lord is that spirit. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. Being assured, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, who taught you? And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. See, we are to live in accordance with the scriptures, people. Uh, the scriptures, living our lives in accordance to the scriptures. Verse 10 in Psalm 19. More to be desired are they than fine gold, yea, than much, than much fine. More to be desired are they than gold, beg your pardon. Yea, then much fine gold, sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Verse 11. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them is great reward. See, if you don't rightly divide the word of truth, God is ashamed of you. Okay, the whole book is written for you, but it's not all written to you. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. If you do not do that, God's ashamed of you. You of the church of the living God, you don't live your life according to the scriptures for us today in this dispensation and take in the totality of all of the scripture, okay? Like it says in Romans chapter 15 again, okay? Go there again. Refresh your memory. Romans chapter 15, okay? Verse 4. For what so things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them is great reward. 
Psalm 119, Shin. Psalm 119, Shin. Psalm 119, Shin. Psalm 119, Shin, which is verses 161 on the 168. See, when you ignore the scriptures, when you hate instruction and cast God's word behind your back, when you close the scriptures, whatever piddly, wishy-washy excuse you want to use, but when you close the scriptures, cast this instruction behind your back. That brings what? That brings shame. God's ashamed of you if you decide to throw his word behind your back and not live according to it. But what happens when you do live according to it? Psalm 119 Shin, verses 161 on to verse 168. Check this out. Princes have persecuted me without a cause. The prince of the power of the air. But my heart standeth in awe of thy word. I rejoice at that word at thy word as one that findeth great spoil. I hate and abhor lying. But thy law do I love. There is no lie within the scriptures, dear friends, obviously. Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy oh, righteous judgments. Look at uh, verse 165. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Lord, I have hoped for thy salvation and done thy commandments. My soul hath kept thy testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies, for all my ways are before thee. Look at 165. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Peace. Shalom. When you live your life in accordance with Scripture, when you live your life according to what God has said for us today in this dispensation, to take in the totality of Scripture, the totality of God that made everything, the totality of Scripture, which He has given for us, and you live according to what He says, that, that produces in you a peace. Well, the world might call me crazy. The world might disown me. But I know I'm doing it the right way. See, Perfect example. The model and the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Them forcing this stuff upon you is contrary to Scripture. And when you adhere to the dictates of Scripture as led by the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that, is that Spirit, though they take all things away from you and you lose many things, yet you have peace. Why? Because you are doing it the way God says. And the world doesn't understand that. See, they think by gaining, they say that gain is godliness. Gain is godliness. From such withdrawing thyself, have understanding from those who say gain is godliness. Okay? Withdraw thyself. Get away from them. But see, they equate covetousness with joy and happiness. When you live according to the scriptures, that's peace. That's true peace. See, you wicked people who don't live according to the scripture and only take a profane name upon you, you're a Christian, right? And live as the devil. Isaiah 48, verse 22. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. You have no peace. You can have passing moments where things are calm, and you can have a false peace, but at the end of the day, you have no peace. For, though, for when goods increase, 
uh, they increase that want them. And what, uh, what more is it uh, than getting of stuff than the beholding of it with your eyes? Yeah, naked came we into this world and naked shall we return hither? Thither, excuse me. The Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. You want contentment in your life? Number one, you need to be saved. Number two, live according to this. It's hard, yeah. It's hard. Sure it is. Sure it is. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Yeah, it's, of course it is. Of course it is. Because it goes uh, contrary to what the world says. Okay? John chapter 14, verses 23. On to verse 27. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. Where do you find his words? In the authorized version of Scripture. And my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. See, the peace that the world gives unto you needs to constantly, constantly be refilled. By what? By covetousness. Get a bigger house. Get a better job. Then you'll have peace. Get your trophy wife or your trophy husband. Then you'll have peace. Get that one extra thing that you don't really need that's going to put you in the debt. Then you'll have peace. Then you can sit back there, right? No. 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 Peace I live with, leave with you. My peace I give unto you. What peace we have as the church of the living God, knowing that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That our sins are forgiven. Okay? That doesn't mean that we don't sin. Okay? That doesn't mean that we, when we sin, we don't go to the, uh, uh, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and ask him for our, his forgiveness. No. No, when you sin, you repent. You go to the Lord, and the blood of Jesus Christ's Son cleanseth us from all sin. But see, that confidence, that peace that we have, knowing that this, this ain't our home. This isn't home. Like a brother of, uh, of ours, our best friend, was saying to me last night, this isn't home. This is where I dwell, but this isn't home. Our home is where our heart is. Where is your heart at? Is it in things of the world? Or is it out of the things of the Lord? Hmm? See, that peace that we have is knowing that if we die, we're going to be with the Lord. If we get caught up, we're going to be with the Lord. We are not going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble. All this is temporary. This is in our home. And when we live our lives in accordance with the scriptures. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. See, unless you're saved, this peace, we can, we can explain to you, but you won't know it unless the Lord save you. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4, on to verse 7. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation, 
be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Uh, the Lord is at hand. Moderation, through moderation, not uh, covetousness, not uh, gluttony, but moderation. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That peace that passeth all understanding. Haven't you ever been asked, Church of the Living God, how is it that you can remain so peaceful and calm during all this stuff? To be absent from the body is present, to be present with the Lord. See, you lost people don't get that, unfortunately. Now, verse 12 in Psalm 19. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Psalm 39. Now check this out. Psalm 39. Psalm 39, verse 12 here in uh, Psalm 19. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Psalm 39, verses 4 under verse 6. Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. Behold, thou hast made my days as an hand breadth, Ain't that big, is it? And mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man in his best state is altogether vanity shila. Surely every man walketh in a vain shoe and dances and struts his stuff upon the stage to be heard of no more. It is a tale told by an idiot. Full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. A little Shakespeare, big part. Surely every man walketh in a vain shoe. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches, and knoweth not who shall gather them. Verse 13 in Psalm 19. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and shall be innocent from the great transgression. Psalm 9, uh, 39, verses 7, unto the close of the chapter now. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. Now wait. What's your hope in? What's your hope in? My hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to be redeemed, caught up. The blessed hope. The resurrection, the catching away. My hope and everything is on Jesus Christ. What is your hope in? The world, your money, your house, your car, your job, your <laughs> steel of the Jesuit poniard? <laughs> Deliver me from all my transgressions. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. Those who say in their heart there is no God. Living foolishly is living as if there is no God. I was dumb. I opened not my mouth. That's what dumb means. Because thou didst it. Remove thy stroke away from me. I am consumed by the blow of thine hand. When thou with rebukes dost correct man for iniquity, thou makest even, thou makest his beauty to consume away like a moth. Surely every man is vanity. Shilah. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee, and a sojourner, as all my fathers were. O spare me, that I may recover strength before I go hence and be no more. Appealing unto the God of all things, the God of everything, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father who's so big, heaven itself can't even contain him. 
You see? Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Oh, Romans chapter 6. Come on, fingers, work with me. <laughs> Beg your pardon, brethren. Romans chapter 6. Let's read verse 13 again. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and shall be innocent from the great transgression. Romans chapter 6, verses 15 on to verse 23. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Like these easy believism people, they do this. We're under grace. Doesn't affect your salvation. Go ahead, sin. You, you shouldn't do that. But hey, remember, it doesn't affect your salvation. So go ahead and sin. It doesn't matter because you're, it doesn't affect your salvation. But yet we are to be separate other than that. While the easy believism heretic encourages you to, hey, it's okay. Don't worry. You're saved. Okay, they might not necessarily encourage you, but they surely don't discourage you, do they? No, what do they tell you? You go to them. Doesn't affect your salvation. I sin. Doesn't affect your salvation. We're under grace. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you shouldn't do that, but don't worry. God's grace is enough. When someone in the church of the living God, I, I, I sinned. I did something really bad. Dude, dude, you... You need to repent right away. You need to go to the Lord and repent and get that fixed up with him right away. Or else what will happen? It will turn you over to the destruction of the flesh that the spirit might be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. And then you stand before him at the judgment seat of Christ and he'd be ashamed of you. You need to repent, buddy. The easy believism heretic. I I've sinned. Doesn't affect your salvation. See, the easy believism heretic does. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? You're under grace. Don't worry about it. What does Paul say to that? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants, not slaves, to obey his servants, not slaves, ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants, not slaves, of sin. But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants, not slaves, of righteousness. You're not a slave. God is not holding the gun at your head. You're not a slave. Satan is not making you sin. Being made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For in your flesh dwelleth no good thing. The spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. The flesh profiteth nothing, Catholic, okay? For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, meaning flesh, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness, being other than that. How do you learn how to do that? How shall a young man cleanse his way but by taking heed thereto according to thy word? Why aren't you reading this book? What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is what? Death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness being other than and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
And then you might be thinking about sinless perfection or whatnot. Read Romans chapter 7 sometime. Paul, the greatest of the church of the living God, dealt with sin. Okay? He says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Because sin has been uh, big part. I don't know if you heard that, but sin has been condemned to where? Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Uh, let's read verse 13 in Psalm 19 again. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and shall be innocent from the great transgression. Romans chapter 8. Verses 1 on to verse 15. Can you handle this? There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, all flesh is weak, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Why worship flesh? You know, the little wafer cookie. Why worship that? I, uh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the, after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. To be carn for to be carnally fleshly minded, for, for to be carnally minded, fleshly minded, is death. But to be spiritually minded, look at that, it's life and peace. Life and peace. Because the carnal mind, the fleshly mind, is enmity against God. Why? Because it's carnal. It's flesh. And all flesh, what? Verse 3, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, sinful flesh, yes, the flesh of Jesus Christ, whoa, was sinful, you wicked Catholic, okay? Condemned sin in the flesh. Verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. See, when you are ignoring what Scripture says and giving yourself willfully sinning, and all sin is willful sin, by the way. When you choose to give yourself over to that, ignoring the Scripture, you're in, you're in your flesh. You're living in your flesh. And see, that's a daily struggle. See, someone cannot live in the spirit 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's impossible for us to do. Why? Because our spirit and soul are within sinful flesh. The flesh fights against the spirit every single day. That's what Romans 7 is about. Okay? Now let's continue. Verse 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Spirit of God, you mean the Holy Ghost? Yeah. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, <laughs> he is none of his. So, Spirit of God, Spirit of Truth, the Holy Ghost, Spirit of Christ. One God comprising of spirit, soul, and body. <laughs> spirit, soul, and body. Like you and I, we have a spirit, soul, and body. So, spirit of God, spirit of Christ, the spirit of truth, one God. One God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit. Okay. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead 
The body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Verse 25 and 26 in Romans 7. Look at them. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. Verse 3 in Romans chapter 8. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemns sin in the flesh. Can it be any more obvious? Verse 25 in Romans 7. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Knowing that you can't be sinlessly perfect down here on earth. It's impossible. If anyone says they are, they're calling God a liar. They are a liar and they are sinning in themselves. Okay? So, verse 10 again in Romans chapter 8. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Give you what you need, quicken you, strengthen you. Okay? So you can do these things. But then again, remember, he's not forcing you. Neither is the devil. Okay? Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh to live after the flesh. See, this is denoting choice, that you have choice. God or Satan is not forcing you to do anything. That's what we do. We have to choose to follow after the Lord has saved us. Okay? You're going to obey? Or are you not going to obey? Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. Why? For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit to mortify the deeds of the body, the body of this death, put down, ye shall live. But how many of you go, like, say, never mind, I'm just going to give in to it. Is there a struggle there with that sin, buddy? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And very quickly, we have to touch on this. We have to touch on this. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And that comes through peace. Peace from doing it God's way. And finally, verse 14 in Psalm 19. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Psalm 119, Mem. Psalm 119, Mem. Psalm 119, Mem, verses 97 on to verse 104. Oh, how love I thy law. It is the meditation, all, it is my meditation all the day. You want peace in your life? Get saved. Come to the Lord broken and contrite. Contrite. It's your fault that he died. You're not innocent. You can't save yourself. You're, it's hopeless for you. Repent of your self-righteousness. Come to him in godly sorrow. Be afraid of him because if you don't, he can send you to hell just like that. And he has every right to send you there. Fear him and call upon his name and ask him to save you. May he save you. Thou through thy commandments hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. We're behind enemy lines today, ain't we, brethren? I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. 
implicating, implying that the teachers around us today are not in the scriptures, don't know God, aren't saved. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. Again, the implication that the ancients weren't always in the testimonies, weren't saved. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. Refrained, have understanding, departing from evil. How do you do that? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. Remember what we looked at in Timothy? Knowing from whom thou hast learned them. Who did you learn this from? Ruckman? God. For thou hast, hast taught me. For thou hast taught me. Spirit of truth who will lead you and guide you into all truth. Yes, God can use men, yes. But who's teaching you? How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Departing from evil. Therefore I hate every false way. I hate every false way. A way that wants you to be as the world, to win the world. Nonsense. Satanic blasphemy. That peace that passeth on all understanding, to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. Knowing, knowing, okay? Knowing. Go to 1 John. 1 John. 1 John chapter 1. First John chapter 1, verse 7 on to verse 10. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. If we say, you lost people, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That holds, verse 9, for both you who are lost, come to the Lord broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, call upon his name, and may he save you. And for us, church of living God, you're saved and you're in sin. Confess, repent, get right with the Lord. Verse 10. If we say we have not sinned, meaning, I don't sin anymore. See, verse 8 for lost, verse 10 for those of us in the Church of the Living God, well, verse 9 is a double-edged sword for both. If we say that we have not sinned, I don't sin anymore. I'm sinlessly perfect, you lie. We make him a liar. And his word is not in us. John, 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, verses 9, on to verse 13. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness, the Holy Ghost, in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record God, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may, Catholic, you hate this, that ye may know 
that ye, that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Catholic, what do you call knowing that you're saved? You call that what? The sin of presumption. When the scripture tells us that we know, we know that we have eternal life. We know it. Why? Because we believe the record, the record that God has given of his son. Hence, that peace that passeth all understanding. See, Psalm 19 here, from verse 1 and 6, talks about the totality, the all of God, that he is everything, that he is all. Verses 7 on verse 14 admonishes us what? To live according to his word. To do what pleases him. And when we live in accordance to his word, we have peace. When we step outside of that, what happens? All things go to poopy. You want peace in your life, dear friend. You need to come to the Lord Jesus Christ, broken and contrite, and call upon him in fear of him. And he, may he save you. Because the world will offer you all kinds of what it calls peace. But that's not peace. That's a trap. You, my brothers and sisters of the Church of the Living God, how many times have you, have you encountered that? How can you stay calm in all this? This stuff doesn't worry you? <laughs> Not at all. We have moments of fleeting fancy where we, our flesh gets the better of us. Of course. Of course. But ultimately we know. We know something. We know that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We know that if we sin, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from all sin. But see, unlike the easy believism devils who teach you to take advantage of that, cheapening God's grace, we do as we can to remain in the spirit and do battle with our flesh. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope this has helped. I hope this made sense unto some of you. Some of it might not have. I don't know. That's between you and the Lord. But this is what the Lord has shown me personally with Psalm 19 here. Like I said, recently, you know, I, I have, I'm going through, I go through the book of Psalms always, always. But I've been purposely setting time aside just to sit here and read Psalm 19 slowly every day. I mean, with, uh, with uh, the reading of scripture, but the Lord has just shown me so so much, so much through the psalm. And like I said, I just wanted to share this with you, okay? Now, hopefully this has helped. Hopefully this has been, um, um, I don't know. Hopefully this has helped you. Hopefully this is, uh, the Lord has done something for you through this, hopefully. That's, that's the hope. But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching this if you do. We love you. Thank you so much for all of you, for your prayers, for your help, for your gifts, for your grace. Thank you so much. We love you. Please keep us in, our, uh, in your prayers. Uh, please keep my wife in your prayers. Um, some things have come up that she might be able to get some answers and help. So please keep my wife, your sister, in your prayers over these things. Uh, pray for our, our protection as we pray for you. Thank you. Thank you to every single one of you, and you know who you are. The Lord reward you. And may you have fruit abounding. Thank you. We love you. We'll see you in the next video, okay?